When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. Man, we were just talking about it. You know what? PPC sucks. Like everything about it sucks. It's so <laughs> expensive. Cost per acquisition is through the freaking roof. Depending on which campaign you're running, I mean, it could be anywhere from a hundred dollars to acquire that lead, or it could be three hundred dollars. It's absolutely insane. Um, and you know, I, I talk about this with my clients and with friends and people that I know, and it's just like you need to be doing LSAs, right? LSAs are huge. Um, they're it's so just focusing on cost per acquisition it's at least half the price of ppc um and if you're in a market where you're going to be ranking high and you're doing all the things that you need to be ranking high you're going to get way more actual tangible leads out of it when it comes to the ppc standpoint though like i tell every single one of my clients do not do ppcs until you hit five or six trucks because it just doesn't make sense i mean you could literally spend four or five thousand dollars a month in ppc budget um to return like 500 bucks it's ridiculous it's great i've done it before like you know i had three or four trucks and it was like oh you know gotta get everywhere right i gotta be everywhere i gotta be everywhere i gotta be on facebook i gotta be on instagram i gotta be on ppc i gotta be on lsa's all the different stuff when in reality it's not so much about how many places you're spending your money where you're spending your money yeah what happened real quick because we had i had a conversation with another private client that they had the same situation happen where and i don't really know exactly what happened but before they knew it they were ten thousand dollars into a ppc campaign like did they not set a budget that okay you've spent all your budget now you don't appear on ppc or what so, I mean, what happens with it is you need to set a budget, right? Um, but it's like that budget could be $20 a day. But if you're paying $15 a click, that's only one click that you're going to get, mm-hmm. right? So you get that one click, they call, they don't want to pay the dispatch fee or they call or they click and they end up on your website and they don't end up converting. And that's the other thing with PVC. It's like conversions are completely different. So, I mean, that could be, they click on your ad, they go to your website, they spend more than 30 seconds on your website, or they click on more than one other page on your website, right? Mm-hmm. And that's considered a conversion by Google stan- standards, right? They spent X amount of time on your website, that's a conversion. When in reality, when I have that link to Service Titan, right? I could be at a 20% conversion rate on Google, but I go into Service Titan and it's two. Or I could look at a a Google dashboard that's saying, you know, this led to X amount of clicks. And then I could take my average ticket and I could say, oh, this should be X amount of money. Right. And then I look into service Titan because it's all linked together and it's, I made $500, but I spent 3000 yeah. off of that so campaign. The, so those analytics, just looking at the wrong dashboard can give you the wrong sense of what's really going on. Right. Yeah. Well, that's why it's so important to have a service software that links back into all that stuff and can track all that stuff so you could actually see what's going on in real world data because google's definition of a conversion is them spending thir- more than 30 seconds on my website my idea of a conversion is hey we go to your house and we sell a new water heater Correct. you know i i it's not even we go to your house because that's just a dispatch fee that's not a conversion right so um it, you know, it could be more than 30 seconds on my website and then it could be called us and then it could be booked a call. Then it could be ran a call and we still didn't convert because we got a dispatch fee. So, I mean, that stuff, it's important to look at that stuff on the back end, at least on a quarterly basis. Just, hey, what am I spending on this and what's it yielding me, right? Yeah. Um, When you're talking about, you know, just on the PPC standpoint, like I was saying, I, I tell anyone that's less than five or six trucks, just don't even do it. Cause it, it's literally, I mean, you've done this, right? So you build this company, 
and it's like one truck you're stupid busy you got to hire another guy you have two trucks now you have three trucks and then somewhere in that four to five truck range you just stop making the profit you were making off the one to three truck range i don't know why it is but it's kind of like there's a little valley there and it's like a speed bump that you have to get over into that seven eight nine truck range yeah um, if you're sitting in that four or five truck range for some reason, because you need more, right? Yeah. If you have four or five trucks, you need a shop. You have four or five trucks, you need someone in the office. You have four or five, six, you need two cameras. You need a jetter. You need like you just need all these things, right? Um, so you're not gonna be making the same return on the money that you did with one to three trucks. Yeah, and also the marketing that you had been doing up to that point was probably more along the lines of word of mouth. Mm-hmm. And then you have to leave the comforts of what word of mouth can provide you and start really spending some serious money, some serious money on advertising, marketing. And, you know, if you're going to spend 10% of your top line revenue on advertising and you really stick to that, that's a lot of money. That's that's Mm -hmm. way more than you're used to spending. So there's that, but you can't sustain I'd say you can't sustain a, I don't know. How many trucks do you think it takes before you have to, you have to rely on marketing? I would, I would say between three and four four and five. Yeah. Because you'll really start to feel it. If your marketing doesn't. So that's that speed. Yeah, go ahead. That's right. The speed bump you were talking about. No, it's all right. Yeah. I mean, it's just that speed bump. It's like this weird place where you have to buy all these extra things and you don't necessarily have enough leads coming in to keep four guys busy or five guys busy. So that's where the PPC comes in handy. It's like, even if you're doing LSAs to keep three guys busy, it's like, well, now I got to keep four or five guys busy until I get to that sixth guy. Right. So it's almost, I don't want to call it a loss leader, but it's like, we'll throw some stuff at the wall and see if it sticks just to get these guys out there doing jobs. Yeah. So, yeah. That's uh that's, that's a tough place to be, but you have to go through that. And then, you know, one thing about, like I use search Kings and they did set a budget that like a do not exceed budget for PPCs. And I think that that eliminated the, the runaway type situation that you were talking about. And one of my private clients was, I mean, he said, he, he literally said, $10,000 later, they were like, what is going on? And I think that, I think that they, they were able to rectify that with Google and Google helped them back out, helped them out because something happened. I don't know what, but I I know that that's a, that's a huge amount of money to spend when you're a small operation. Yeah. I mean, Uh, it's just a balancing act, right? I mean, it's a balancing act of how much can I afford to pay to get leads coming in just to keep, the guy's busy, right? So it's like you could set a budget all you want, right? Mm-hmm. But let's just say, let's say I'm only running one PPC campaign, right? And I set a budget of eighty dollars a day because that's not that much money. That's that's a couple clicks. Um, so I set a budget of eighty dollars a day over, over thirty days. That's twenty four hundred bucks, and that's yeah. one campaign. And at any point in time, I could be running four or five or six PPC campaigns. So what? how are those campaigns performing? What am I actually getting back out of that? That's why it's so important to have the software that links back into it where you could actually look at the real world data, not the Google data. You don't want the Google conversion rate. You want the real conversion rate. And when that conversion rate's 2%, you're going to be pissed off. Yeah. Um, so what we, what we started doing since we got over that speed bump of, you know, that four or five truck operation um, is we started reserving that budget. Um, So I took the budget that I had set aside for PBC and I reserved that budget for the 12 months. And then I know that I'm going to be really slow in the last two weeks of August and the first two weeks of September. And I know that I'm going to be really slow the first two or three weeks of January. And I know that I'm going to have a little lull in March 
for the second or the third week. And we spend that whole budget during those times. Because that allows us to actually outbid our competitors who are bidding $80 a day, right? Because it, it's pay per click. So it's like an automatic bidding process. So <laughs> what that allows us to do is in those slow times, we're able to go in there and say, we'll pay $200 a click. Where our competitors are only paying $80 a click. And that allows us to get X amount of calls on those days, right? When we're slow and we're, we don't have anything coming in through LSA. We don't have anything coming in through word of mouth. Hey, every professional tradesman knows you wouldn't build a house without a blueprint, right? So why are you trying to build your home service business without one? Grab your free copy of my Million Dollar Pro Blueprint. In it, I lay out the exact specs on how to build a successful, self-sustaining, and very profitable home service business. Don't risk years of waste of time and money and failure. Grab the Million Dollar Pro Blueprint now, and it's free. My gift to you for simply being a Coach's Corner listener. Go to milliondollarpro.com forward slash free and start building success. Kids are going back to school, so everything's kind of winding down for the summer. That allows us for those real emergencies where people are just going on there and saying, I need a plumber now. Mm -hmm. We're just going to outbid our competitors during those slow times to keep us afloat. Yeah. And when we talk about costs per acquisition, we start to realize how much each click is costing us. And we have to do something with that call that comes in. Like we have to be able to, uh, book that call and that's why knowing what your booking rate is is so important like because you may think oh we're not getting a lot of calls we're not we we don't have enough calls but do you know that it's not a a CSR problem like can you look back mm -hmm. and say this is why uh at least i can eliminate that from the from the list of things that it might be so Talk a little bit about booking rate and what that means, because I know what it means because I've been yeah. taught. Well, it's really the big three, right? And um, we did a little bit of talking about that on the last episode, but I mean, we both listen to Tommy Mello's podcast and he always talks about the big three, right? Mm -hmm. Bring me any company and I can tell you if they're successful based on their cost per acquisition, their booking rate and their conversion rate. Um, so cost per, per acquisitions and and I don't want to narrow that down into it's just a Google thing right like there's there's cost per click right that's Google but there's also what else are you doing are you doing uh community outreach advertising right are you sponsoring local sports teams are you uh going to local community events and having a little booth set up um are you doing billboards are you doing banner planes like everything that you're doing divided by the amount of calls that you're running in a year is really your calls per acquisition. Um, yeah. And really what we'd like to see, and Dan from Kick Charge, uh, Tommy's business partner now, would tell yeah. you is that as you get a real brand, right, and your brand gets out there in the community and people start to know, like, and trust your brand, the necessity of having to pay Google for a cost per click or an LSA starts to dwindle down because you're getting these natural phone calls of, people people know you and people want to call you uh because they know your brand yeah. um but as far as booking rate um yes yeah, so, i mean that's basically it's just how many people called you and were a legitimate lead um and how many of those did you book a job for um so Real, I mean, quick numbers. Service Titan makes it easy when you, you just go back and listen to the recorded calls. Yeah. And then you can classify them and you can say, this was not, this was not a, this was not um, an opportunity. This was an opportunity. Yeah. Um, but basically for easy numbers, let's say you get 10 calls a day for 30 days. I mean, that's, that's 300 calls. Um, and if you book all 300 of those and you go to their houses and you serve those people, then you have a hundred percent booking rate. Yep. But it's really easy. Like you're saying to say, Hey, we don't have enough calls on the board and you're not paying attention to this stuff. And then all of a sudden you look back and you had 300 calls for the month and you only ran a hundred jobs. Mm -hmm. So what happened to those other 200 calls? 
Well, if you have a software like service side, you can go back in, you can say, oh, 75 were, were excused because they were vendors or uh, AR or yeah. whatever, right? It, it's really easy to then go back in as long as you're classifying everything, right? As long as your CSR is doing everything right, it's easy to look in and it's just a real quick, it's one number on your dashboard. This is our booking rate. And you can do that for today, for yesterday, for the last 90 days, for the last month, for the last year. Um, but it's really important to go back um, and look at those things because it's our mind defaults usually to it's a quantity issue. Yeah. When sometimes exactly it's a right. quality issue. Yeah. Because too, like when you, when those calls come in, just like we, there is a misconception of how many hours there are in a day and oh, you must be charging this much per hour if your price is this much. That's not it. Like, you have to back some of that out of there. And I'm trying to make the the correlation between calls and booking rate and actual hours in the day. So there are, there are not 365 days in the year where you get to divide. You have to take away the, actual, the weekends, the, the holidays, the vacation days. Uh, and then you have to back out the actual percentage of time that is actually going to be sold. So you have a, a lot smaller number. So mm -hmm. booking rate, if you have 300 calls and then you go in there and 50 of them were hangups, which there are a lot of hangups. If you, if you go back and listen to a lot of the, the calls, I don't know why that is, but uh, some of them are wrong numbers. Some of them are, uh, uh, what's another one? They just they just wanted uh to see what what time you were going to be here because they're already booked. You have to really be accurate on that booking rate. Um, so and also too, that's why it's so important to have a good CRM, a good customer retention management system like Service Titan or Field Pulse or whatever. As long as you can capture that information because that's what you're going to make your decisions based on. Like what if it's your CR, what if it's your uh, CSR? What if your CSR, mm -hmm. every time they ask how much is it to change a toilet, they blurt out some number and they can't control the, the call and they end up a lot of times hearing, Oh, you know what? I'll just shop around. I don't really, I don't really mm -hmm. feel like I, I want to pay that dispatch fee. That's a C. That's a that's a customer service rep problem. That's not a call volume problem. So, just being able to to know the difference is a huge thing, and conversion rate too. Like just because you have a hundred opportunities, uh, and you go, let's say, like let, let, let's touch on conversion rate for a second. So our dispatch fee is ninety six dollars. When we go to a job and we leave with $96, that's not a converted job. So if you sell something more than $96, that's a converted job. And mm. that's a huge difference. So I know in Service Titan, when we have a service, when we have a dispatch fee, the task dispatch fee, there is a way to set the job threshold to calculate the conversion rate. And I know you know this, but I have to talk this through because a lot of people in general that don't have a CRM or don't have a way to track that, they don't know. But in, in Service Titan, at least, you can set that job type for, like every job type that I, ha that I have is set to $97. That's the threshold because if they sell 96 or below, it affects their conversion rate. So that's, that's what conversion rate means in a nutshell just if you just because you go out and collect the dispatch fee that's not a conversion that's that's not a converted job and that's a way you can um evaluate the performance of your technicians because we've heard a lot yeah, of like, technicians say man i've been to eight jobs a day automate your company's day-to-day -day scheduling dispatching and billing systems with service titan 
Service Titan is the world's leading all-in-one field management software for home service businesses looking to improve efficiency and profitability. Just ask the Coach's Corner listeners who have made the move to Service Titan. Not only have they saved thousands by eliminating time spent on profit-sucking manual tasks, but they now have scalable processes in place to help grow their business for years to come. To check them out and to take advantage of special discounts for Coach's Corner listeners, go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash Service Titan. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, just like you can evaluate the, the performance of your CSR based on the booking rate. If right. it's accurate, right, that is an opportunity to book a call that you did not convert on. Um, and if they did convert on it, then your technician got there and they did not convert on the call. It was an opportunity to sell a job that they didn't convert on. Um, and, you know, we, you know, you and I, you and I have discussed this at length, but this becomes especially important during those slow times where there's less calls and less opportunities. That's when you really have to start focusing on the quality, right? But if you're focusing yeah. on it all year long, if all year long I'm focusing on the quality of the leads coming in, the quality of the customer service experience, and then the quality of the technicians, right? And, and the options that they're providing, right? It, it all ties together. Um, if I'm focusing on that year round, then in those slow times, it doesn't really change much. Cause yeah. at the end of the day, me and you pretty much have a similar model where we're, we're looking for our guys to do between two and three calls a day. Yeah. Um, which it isn't that much. Um, you know, what we really want is we want our CSR to convert and book the call. And then we want our technician to show up on time, clean, booties the whole nine yards right and then go in there evaluate the issue and then sell three or four hours at that job and take care of mrs jones's issues yeah and that's Uh, a and that's a hard jump to make when you are a business owner and you're still thinking like man i gotta have four or five jobs for each technician and that's gonna be man times five technicians that's 25 jobs a day well so with this explanation, you can see that you don't have to have 25 calls a day, 25 leads. You just need to do as much as possible with the leads that you have. So really some of the best technicians do the best work with like less than two jobs a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, some of our best days that we've ever had as a company is with five calls. Yeah. Or six calls or seven, like, the exact same amount of calls that you have technicians, because that means that they sold all their time at those jobs, right? And then we have times where we have 25 calls and we got seven guys out running calls and everyone's back at the shop at like three o'clock and we made mm-hmm. 700 bucks. It's like, <laughs> yeah, how, how is this possible? You know? Yeah. And it all goes back to the conversation with the customer. And we're not talking about slimy, sleazy tactics where you pull a bait and switch on the customer and tell them that you're coming out to clean all their drains for $96. And then you say, oh, yeah, well, it doesn't include this and it doesn't include that. No, no, we're, we're, it's $96 dispatch fee for us to come out. And we're going to have a conversation about what needs to be done in the particular instance in which you called us out for. And once we agree on that, then I'll either do the work and then do a plumbing inspection before I leave just to make sure, like I I realize again, and we'll say this over and over again, you didn't want us out here to begin with. We are a means to an end. That's what, that's what we are. And we are okay with that. But while I'm here, like, let me tell you about our water filtration packages, because if you know anything about what's in your tap water and you let me test your water really quickly, you're going to find out that you're drinking uh, the equivalent of of pool water is is what it all boils down to, and there are there are chemicals in your water like PFAS that are carcinogens, and on and on and on. That's just one caveat. And hey, uh, I see in your job history that we've had three PEX leaks in the last four years that we've been here. I just want you to know about this product that we have that hooks up to your Wi-Fi and it is a water valve that'll shut your water off uh, when it when it senses anything 
longer than 15 seconds running when you're not home, it'll shut your water off and it'll notify you that it shuts your water off. Like I know that a lot of our customers would be thrilled to death to have that, that aren't necessarily ready to pull the trigger on a whole repipe, but they know that every time they leave the house, is this going to be the time that my, when I get home, my, my ceiling's falling in because I've already had three Durapex leaks. Yeah. Um, and really that all boils down to uh, how much value are we providing the customer, right? I mean, that's really what we're there for. Like you said, it's not sleazy sales tactics. It's not that we're trying to push the automatic shutoff valves or we're trying to anything. It's just, I'm here already, right? You don't want me here. I don't really want to be here. Like, how can I best serve you while I am here and how we, we make the best use of our time? Um, and yeah, I mean, I had a customer recently, we put a new water heater in for him three months later, he had a CPVC line, let go right above his water heater, flooded his basement, took the water heater out. So we said to him, you know, whatever we, we worked with him a little bit. He was going through homeowners insurance. Um, we're like, Hey, we're just gonna put the water heater in today. You paid us three months ago. We know you're good for the money, right? Like whatever you get from your homeowner's insurance is what we'll do it for. Right. We're not looking to double dip or anything like that. Like we just want to make sure you're whole, right. Provide value for the customer, calm them down in their time of need. And then while we're there, the technician explains to him, yeah, you know, th has this ever happened to you before? Well, it happened with the water heater. Now it happened with this CPVC line. It happened one other time. Right. And he said, well, let me tell you about these, these whole water, whole home water shutoff valves that automatically sense if there's a leak. Cause this happened at like 10 o'clock last night after y'all went to bed and you found it at six o'clock this morning when you went downstairs to work out. That's why there's so much water down here. Yeah. And these so, customers uh, don't know that when the like late at night, after everybody in the neighborhood is done using water, that pressure rises. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so he explained it to him. He's like, wow, that sounds like a great idea. He's like, my sister had that happen last year, but it happened on the third floor and it took out her master bedroom and her kitchen and two rooms in her basement because they were away on vacation. Um, yeah. So it, it's really just about providing value for the customer. And if you show up and, you know, we'll get into our last little thing here, but if you show up and you provide value, that's, that's what's going to lead you to have a higher ticket average. Yeah. And we have to get out of the mindset of, well, the flapper was leaking, so I fixed the flapper. I mean, that's that's not serving you. It's not serving the company you work for. It's not serving your family because you're not going home with hardly any paycheck. And mm -hmm. it's not serving the long term lifetime value of the customer because if you don't if if you don't look for the problems that could be coming down the pipe and and inform the customer about them, then if something happens within a short time of you being there, why didn't you catch it? Like if I'm a homeowner and I have a plumber out and they fix one thing and they did a whole home inspection and they didn't bring this to my attention. Like, why didn't you bring it to my attention? My, my house is flooded now. Why didn't you say something? And I think it goes back to having a, a wrench Turner mentality instead of a, well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's just a scarcity mindset versus an abundance mindset. Really? It's going in there saying, well, I couldn't afford to do this. So my customer can't afford to do this, or I wouldn't want to pay someone to do this. So my customer is not going to want to pay to have someone do this. Um, which, you know, in our trainings with our techs, we, I can kind of take that mindset and I can turn that into an asset. Um, because a lot of them do have that mindset, right? Like they don't have a lot of savings in the bank, right? Most of them, um, whereas, you know, if their water heater went, right, and I, I say this to them, like, if your water heater went and Eric came in here and he was like, oh, it's going to be $3,000 for a new water heater, just pick a number, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have $3,000 to pay Eric for the new water heater? Are you going to be upset that you have to pay $3,000? Oh, yeah, absolutely, 100% would be upset. So I, I can, I kind of talk to them and I can teach them to take that, right? And use that to empathize with the customer, right? Because you you could feel that. Because you would feel that if it happened to you in your own life. So you, you feel what your customer is going through as you're going through this process of offering them your options. 
we're like, oh, 3000 oh, that's, that's a lot of money. I don't know if I could swing that right now. Then you can kind of, oh, I understand. You know, I, I, I wouldn't want to pay it either. I get it. It's a lot of money. Um, you know, maybe we'll just do the good option for today. Um, oh, no. Well, I really want, I really don't want to worry about it for another like eight to 10 years. So, um, and then you can introduce financing. Right. Yeah. Um, so it, 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 it could, it could be a, it could be, um, it could be a liability or it could be an asset. That mindset. It's just about how you frame it. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I mean, the whole the whole thing. I mean, even the CSR, right? We teach them to empathize with the customer, right? I'm so sorry that's happening. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. I'm so sorry that you had to take a cold shower this morning, right? We'll get out someone out there as soon as possible, and then all the way down to the to the sales process, if you will. It's not even really a sales process. It's just showing up for the customer and trying to serve them. But all the way down to that sales process, it's empathizing with the customer. I understand. I understand. Yeah, I get it. I'm so sorry that the, that this happened and you weren't expecting this to happen. And you're going on vacation next week and this is an unexpected expense. You know, we do offer financing, you know, and we could do a whole episode on financing um, and how that is. It's something else that you could have a scarcity mindset about or you can have an abundance mindset about. Um, but it's just it's an opportunity not only for you to make a sale that you otherwise wouldn't have made. Um, but it's an opportunity for you to serve Mrs. Jones, right? You're yeah. there. You showed up on time. You were clean. Someone answered the phone. All the, You check all the boxes. But if at the end of the day, she can't afford your services, it's still not a conversion. Correct. Right? Um, so just, just being able to offer that financing, right? That's just another, it's another feather in the cap, if you will of why you're a better company than the guy literally right next door to you. Right. Yeah. And if you're not offering financing or membership plans, we need to have another episode where we talk about that thoroughly because it, you should, you should, and you, we <laughs> all need to. Yeah. All right, but well, I think that's uh, it for today, huh? Yeah. Maybe we'll uh, cover that in the next episode, memberships and uh, financing options. All right, let's get out of here. I'll see you next time. Later, dude. All right, well, that does it for this episode of the Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below, and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.